Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Cradle Conversation. My name is Laura Halpin, and I am recording this from my home in Walnut Creek, California, which is on the stolen land of the Bay Miwoks. My pronouns are she and her, and I want to welcome my guest, Nick Strack. Thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. Really happy to have you. So um, Nick uses they, them pronouns. And this very happily for me is the first time that we have been in conversation. Um, so I'm really excited just to see what, what comes. Um, Nick lives with their husband and three-year-old child outside of Chicago, right? Yep, and my parents. And your parents. And um, they work as a parenting coach. And I've been really intrigued by their work. If you look on their website, this is the stunning, um, the stunning line that will no doubt draw you in. The relationship you have with yourself defines the relationship you have with your child. <laughs> Any exceptions to that? Nope. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Not that I found, I will say. <laughs> um, and so you, I'm so intrigued by your work because I never really thought about the way that our culture drives our relationship with our children. And I just wanted you to say something, if you would, about you, you use the term or maybe tell me about, is it bespoke parenting? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I have created this framework for bespoke parenting, which essentially is like custom made parenting styles for each parent and each of their children, because I have this belief that mainstream parenting culture centers the child to the detriment of the parent. And so it's almost like aspirational for parents to erase themselves as much as possible from their relationship with their child. And my whole, like all of the work that I'm doing based on the relationship you have with your self defines the relationship you have with your child is around supporting parents in cultivating a more conscious relationship with themselves so that they can show up more fully with their children. I mean, with everybody ever, but I just particularly focus on the parent-child relationship. Mm -hmm. I have never really encountered that perspective in a parenting coach. Oh. And so I just really appreciate, you know, I'm at the tail. Well, no, I am not at the tail end of my parenting. I have a 21 and a 23 year old and it's just a different phase. Sure. But, um, but bringing in, you know, examining the way that the dominant culture shows up in my relationship with my children is, is really like, that's that's definitely something that I want to look at. So I really I'm super excited to become more familiar with your work. Yes, awesome. Um, so as you know, every cradle con oh before we begin, even though we've already begun, I want to call everybody close that is going to be listening and participating in this conversation across space and time and welcome you into this community um, where we're looking for deepening our connection with one another, um, cultivating, cultivating courage, and um, there's some other C words, comfort. <laughs> and anyway, we really appreciate your, your presence and hope that this is uh, um, really brings um, some thought and expansion into your day-to-day. -day. 
So, all right, Nick. So the, the four questions of this cradle conversation begin with this, and that is, what cradles you? I thought about this before because you had sent me the questions and now my answer feels different. So I'm going to roll with what, <laughs> <laughs> with what feels literally relevant for me right now. Like I can hear a thunderstorm happening outside and it may sound so cheesy, but what cradles me is the earth. Mm -hmm. I was just outside with Jack a little while ago and we were running around in the grass with our just like in bare feet. And he's been learning about watering plants and it's just been such a cool experience to be able to, I am cultivating a new relationship with the earth mm -hmm. and to be kind of like doing that in parallel with him has mm -hmm. been really fun and supportive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so does that, does that come in the form of just experiencing the earth with your senses? You just mentioned like the, the grass touching your feet and the sound of thunder. Just yeah. wondering how that shows up for you. Like appreciating the sights and the sounds and the smells and the feels, like any, any of my senses that I can tune into, especially now in this time when there's such a reduced amount of even just like cars driving by and stuff. Um, I can hear so much more and I'm also choosing to listen more. So like that with kind of all of my senses, I think just really appreciating. I used to only look at the flowers that were blooming because like, loss aversion you know like oh my god death no death is ugly and now i'm like literally the circle of life and death how can i appreciate and really acknowledge the fullness of what it means to be someone who lives on this earth and appreciate the magnitude of the earth yeah And I'm thinking about kind of the, the double invitation of like having a young child where you're, you know, experiencing the earth and planting or whatever with him. And then this, the imposed quiet and sheltering in place and that it just provides some space. Yeah to slow down and notice more. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that so much. Do you have a, a cradle to offer us? Yes. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> you get to be human. Mm. That's it. It's, you get to be human. And by that, I mean, and myself included, like we get to be here now where we are, as we are, totally flawed, making mistakes, maybe learning, maybe not, maybe making different decisions, maybe not having all of the feelings that we have, the beliefs, the thoughts, the judgments, the behaviors that we do that we're aware of, the behaviors that we do that we're not, like just full spectrum humanness. We get to be human. That permission feels really radical to me. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a, a duh. <laughs> and then, 
And then it's like, well, what does that even mean? You know, that, and that permission to just be who we are in this moment as we are, you know, is, it's remarkably, it can be remarkably unavailable. Yes. Agreed. How, how do you, can you just like give us a little like, what does that look like to you? Get Getting to be human. Like how did that show up for you today even? I didn't give her this, or I didn't give them this question in advance. So. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Okay. How did that show up for me today? Sorry. Um, a window. Okay. It showed up for me today when I was doing work on a call um, with Jen McCabe and James Olivia mm -hmm. was there and I was bumping up against some of my false beliefs, like one of the false beliefs that I have about myself, like a story that I tell about myself or that, that I lead with is I'm wrong. So mm -hmm. I basically have spent a lot of my life trying to navigate this conundrum of both thinking that I'm right a lot of the time, but also thinking that I'm wrong and like, how the, oh, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to it. <laughs> I recently asked it after I'd already sworn. Okay, so how the fuck am I supposed to show up with all of that in my head? And so there are these, for me, there's this real humanness of like, intellectually, I know that I have these false beliefs. Mm -hmm. and yet I am still surprised in the different ways in which they show up. And my previous, like, super conditioned into capitalism and the striving and trying to be better and all of those kinds of, like, beliefs, like, that version of myself very much would have been like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this again, right? And, like, that is a super human, like, it's a conditioned and like it's where I am kind of a response. And today my response was like, oh shit, there it is again. Mm -hmm. Which for me is a change and holding space for, like not holding myself to this expectation that just because I'm familiar with it, that it never comes up. Mm -hmm. That is, that was not holding me in the fullness of my humanity. Mm -hmm. I was expecting some sort of other creature. Like, it just doesn't feel human for me anymore. Like, mm -hmm. like an acknowledgement of the fullness of my humanity to really be like, hey, yeah, I can want to make different decisions. And also I've made them a certain way for a certain amount of time. And it'll take a while. And first, yeah. I used to think like, it'll take a while and then I would get there. And now I'm like, It'll take a while. It may take my whole life right. to make those different decisions consistently. Like, I do believe with certain things, I do them less often. I don't mm -hmm. do them as intensely. Mm -hmm. And I don't go there for as long. Mm -hmm. So, like, I've noticed shifts in them. And that mm -hmm. is important for me to acknowledge, like, hey, I'm really actually making these different decisions I said I wanted to make, that's cool. Instead of just being like, oh, well, I still did it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's a pass fail. Right. A false binary, exactly. False binary. There's so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we get to be human. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so this is a really important question. Is there something that we can practice? For me, it starts with noticing. Mm -hmm. Like, 
and I was just having this conversation with James Olivia the other day. There's a difference between an observation and a perception and a judgment. Mm -hmm. But I often go so quickly from observation to judgment mm -hmm. that I consider something to just be true. Like I consider the judgment to just be true. Or it's like, mm -hmm. wow, I really talked for a long time in response to that question. Oh God, it was too long, <laughs> taking up too much space, you know, like for whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking about that with them and then we broke it down to like, okay, the, the noticing, the actual neutral observation is I responded to that question for two minutes and 32 seconds or whatever it is, right? Like that mm -hmm. is just a fact. The perception is that's a long time and the judgment is that's a bad thing. Like, but yeah. it starts with being able to notice stuff neutrally, neutral observations. Oh, my heart rate is getting faster right now. Ooh, I feel a tightness in my stomach that's not normally there. Ooh, I feel a flush of blood coming. Up. Like, I've gotten way more familiar with my physical responses to mm -hmm. anger, frustration, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it all started with, like, the noticing. Mm -hmm. So as it relates to honoring the fullness of your humanity, like, notice. Mm -hmm when perhaps you're having thoughts of like judgment or when you're having feelings of guilt, especially as it relates from my parents out there, parenting guilt, that shit is real. Like you can never do anything right. And so in that, being able to separate that, like the judgment of I've done something wrong from like the fact of what you actually did mm -hmm. can help to just create a little more space. Mm -hmm. I think that's what mm -hmm. it's like, the space between mm -hmm. like beliefs, behaviors, humanity, judgments, just like all of these things just kind of like tease them apart a bit so that we can have a little more space to breathe. Right. And I think that that starts with the noticing. That's how patterns shift when we start to notice mm -hmm. and pay attention mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what you said about how so often the noticing and the judgment are so like this. And so like you notice the behavior and to me, the judgment is right there. And what kind of comes right after it is the plan to do better next time, mm. starting tomorrow or, <laughs> you know, like, you know, after this, I'm going to be perfect. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know? And so just that, like, I, I do, I have this visual of like, this is the action and the noticing does create the space where it's just like, oh, huh. And it's so different when, when it's, the judgment is teased away from it, you know? Okay, so what we're gonna practice is we're just gonna practice noticing. Yeah, noticing. Yeah, and if it feels helpful, like noticing, and then you can have it be about a particular thing that you're wanting to pay attention to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For me right now, my current noticing is when I start to feel flooded, when Jack is not doing what I want him to be doing. Noticing. Yeah. And, it's, and like, and then for me, like as quickly as possible to just like not do anything. It's mm -hmm. like notice and pause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it starts with the noticing of mm -hmm. for me, my physical responses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this to you before we um, press record, but one of the the things that I'm noticing right now is my just the the inner like when i watch the the news and i see how other people are responding to the coronavirus and you know that kind of like the welling up of like defensiveness you know this is like what i'm feeling inside so watch out everyone <laughs> and just like noticing 
noticing, you know? Yeah. Because it doesn't feel like I want to feel, you know? Long term. I don't want to operate from that place, you know? Yeah. So that's what I'm practicing. So thank you. You're welcome. I'm noticing. Um, the fourth question is, do you have a vision or a blessing for the collective? I decided to just like leave this one and let whatever wanted to come out, come out. <laughs> awesome. I love that. I'm known for asking these big questions at dinner parties, but when the, when it comes around to me, I never know what to say. So I really <laughs> applaud you for the lack of plan. <laughs> I was like, I'll just let it roll. Let's see what happens. Um, the vision piece, I have a vision. Mm -hmm. And for right now, for where I am with my own explorations and learning, I recognize that my vision is somewhat limited in the sense of it's like, it's about me and like, like two or three circles out, you know, mm -hmm. like I haven't yet, I feel like I haven't made enough decisions interdependently to really understand like, what does it mean to live interdependently or to make interdependent decisions with mm -hmm. groups of folks. Mm -hmm. um, but my current, is it a vision? I guess, yeah, I'm going to call it a vision, is, or like belief, is mm -hmm. understanding makes room for conscious choices. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. And the work that I'm doing and the conversations that I'm having with folks often revolve around that mm -hmm. belief. Mm -hmm. And so my want for the collective, for anyone who's curious, listening, Mm -hmm. um, and interested in cultivating a more conscious relationship with themselves is to go after understanding, mm. like understanding what's happening in me right now, understanding like what is the tension that I'm experiencing maybe between me and this other person or the, the rare that's coming up for you, right? Like being able to understand without getting caught up in like a why, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but just understanding like for me, what is helpful is not to necessarily navel gaze, but to be like, oh, this probably is because like, my parents are immigrants. I was raised in a primarily white neighborhood and systems of oppression and like being able to like, for me, I like to be like, it's probably because this is that. Okay. Given that now what? Like given that this is a belief that I hold, given that this is a behavioral pattern that I have been in and it's something that I want to shift now what? And so that understanding, again, it's about that like space making Mm -hmm. Kind of like with noticing. Noticing creates mm -hmm. a space between the stimulus and the response. And I think mm -hmm. about understanding as doing a simil similar thing of like, oh, like, oh, this is that thing that I've been doing. Oh, this is, oh, this is that belief that I've been conditioned to have. And then it creates room for me to be like, do I want to do the thing I've always done? Or do I mm -hmm. want to make a different decision? Mm -hmm. And like, for me in real life, like sometimes I'll just do the thing I've always done and sometimes I'll make a different decision, right? Because mm -hmm. we get to be human. Mm -hmm. what, what goes through my mind as you're sharing is like, talk about a growth mindset, you know, that, that what I see you doing is, like the word allowing comes to mind rather than fixing, you know? Yes. And that, you know, there's that noticing, but there's not that like um, imperative to fix. Yes. Which I think is so, it's so now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
it's so now to fix. And so it really is um, what it is. It, it really is allowing for humanity. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And when you said talk about a growth mindset and I had this like hesitation, it's because I think that even the phrase growth mindset has gotten caught up in that like capitalistic, always be productive, try to be better kind of thing. <laughs> so like, yeah. that's where I was like, oh. I don't know. But yeah, I, when people talk about like wanting to be their best selves, the way that I think about that is like, I want to be myself. And in all of my work, I have self the word with a capital S to honor like the unique spirit that each of us contains and the essence that is each one of us. And for me, being my self with a capital S, like there's no, be- there's, it's not a best self, worst. It's just like, I just want to be myself. And I have been conditioned away from that from believing that I am allowed to experience and express my wholeness in a way that feels aligned for me. And so I just want to be myself. Mm -hmm. And that's what my work is all about. And in that, I love that allowing piece where it's like literally like allowing space for me to be who I am and acknowledging the things that get in the way like the barriers that I have been conditioned into that I have learned, like ways in which I have learned how to prevent myself and from showing up fully for a billion different, totally valid reasons. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to be the good person or the good mom or the good student or the good whatever, right? Any of it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that. I love the, um, you know, you use the word space. So like permission, allowing space, like, and so we have this room to kind of move in, which feels good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And especially because during times where there is so much uncertainty and so much fear, what we, what we naturally do is like tighten up, tighten up. This is the time that I'm going to do my cleanse and I'm going <laughs> to, you know, do whatever. I'm going to get along with my husband and, you know, whatever. Like, I feel like we get rigid and what you're like, you know, there's a, there's a loosening that I hear you kind of calling us to. Yeah, I love the that a loosening. I'm here for it. Yes. Um thank you. You're welcome. Um before we end the conversation, um, I just want to acknowledge that people are going to be connecting with us across time and space. And that we want to acknowledge their presence here Mm -hmm. and um, say thank you for their company. And one of the definitions of cradle is it's a cradle of civilization. It's a beginning of something. And I really believe that through conversation and connection, we we can cultivate something that perhaps hasn't existed before. And so it feels like a very creative exercise to be together, just having a conversation about what we feel is important to us. And so um, thank you for being here, whoever. (laughs) And thank you so much, Nick's track, for coming into this conversation with me. You're welcome. I love this. Really appreciate it. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.